giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archived FIRST Robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Welcome to your Nor'easter Region Recap. Week one is behind us, and we're off to a really great start. We've got a full slate for you guys today. Three events to recap for y'all, and three that we're looking forward to. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm Audrey. I'm Ben. I'm Kevin. And I'm Dave. Before we get into this, Tyler, we have a giveaway for this show. Can you tell us more about it? Yeah, absolutely. So giveaway coming in from our friends at Analog Devices. Let's take a look at this ADIS 16470 IMU. Uh, this thing's pretty sweet, guys. If you have seen this, this is the next generation IMU designed for demanding high impact applications like those seen in FRC. Many prevalent teams in the FRC community are using this board as their IMU of choice. Uh, so make sure you check this out. This is part of the Analog Devices iSensor product line. You can find out more uh, under their wiki for First Robotics or analog.com forward slash first. And we'll have a keyword later on during the show for you to win. So good luck, everybody, and enjoy Nor'easter Region Recap. Sounds awesome. So, we had our first three district events this weekend, two in New England and one from Mid-Atlantic. So, let's first head up to Granite State for a rocking event, where we saw some powerhouse lower alliances that proved that they wouldn't be taken for granite. Uh, the Granite State District was a wild ride. The event featured a ton of excellent shooters jockeying for the top spot in the rankings. In the end, 49.05 and Andromeda 1 sat atop the rankings. They selected Team 133, Burt, with the first overall pick, and rounded their alliance out with Team 6153, the Blue Crew. But that wasn't the only powerful alliance in the standing. Team 5687, the Outliers, seeded second, and reunited with their Week Zero alliance partners, Team 1519, Mechanical Mayhem, and perennial contender Team 4761, the Rogue Pockets. These two alliances seemed like they were going to be on a collision course for the finals, but they were not. The number two seed was upset in the quarterfinals by the number seven, number seven seeded 35-66 Gone Fishing. Team 319, Big Bad Bob, and Team 151, the Tough Tex. Gone Fishing in particular was matching 5687 cycle for cycle and hitting a five-ball autonomous that gave them an edge in a close-fought four-match series. The seven seed then went on to face the three seed in the semifinals of 4909, the Bionics, 501, the Power Knights, and 7822, Generals Robotics. 4909 was a powerful front court machine, and 501 was hitting the long shots from behind the control panel that powered them to victory at week zero. They also had a super cool autonomous routine where they'd hit shots while they drove. In another close three-match series, the alliance of 4909 and 501 would emerge victorious. On the other side of the bracket, the number one up seed, was upset in the semifinals by the surprisingly resilient number five seed of 6933 Architas, 663 the Robonauts, no, the other ones, and 1517 <laughs> Amped Up, who managed a triple climb while the number one seed only got one climb up. So the final stage was set 4909, 501, and 7822 against the fifth seeded 6933, 663, and 1517. In the end, even though the fifth seed got a triple climb in both of their finals matches, they couldn't keep up with the firepower of the third seed, especially in Autonomous, where 501's award-winning Autonomous routine would give them the edge. Congrats also go out to Team 467, the Colonials, for winning the District Chairman's Award, 4905 for winning Engineering Inspiration, and 8046, the Lakerbots, for winning a well-earned Rookie All-Star Award. They were an Alliance captain on the eighth seed at their first ever event and had an awesome robot, so it was really, really awesome. well deserved. Yeah. What an event. Wow. Third seed versus, versus fifth seed in finals. That's insane. Especially with so much firepower going in. Oh, yeah. Stacked event. Yeah, that's pretty great. Especially that, like, I, I, I'm i kind of stunned that a team named themselves Gone Fishing, to be honest. But I think it's really cool. 
I'm a big fan of that. All right, let's take it to Northern Connecticut as we travel down to the great state of Connecticut. We head off the beaten path to the tiny town of Woodstock, Connecticut. The quiet corner of Connecticut was about to get a little bit louder. With no sort of shortage of competitive teams here, things were off to a quick start straight out of the gate. It was clear that teams with consistent climbs would be able to climb their way to the top and stay there. At the top of the pack team, 67-23, the Mechanical Mounties from Williamstown, Connecticut, for the majority of the was at the top for the majority of the event, running at Qualls with a ranking score of 28. Just below them sat Team 61 from Upton, Mass, with a 25-point ranking score, and Team 63-28 from Littleton, Mass, with 21 ranking points. The high score. The high score of the event went to the blue lines of match 16, putting up 185 points. Shout out to teams 67, 23, 157, and 63, 28. The highest OPR of the event went to team 1153 with 58.51 average at the end. Moving into the playoffs, the number one seed, 67-23, called upon 2370 and rounding out their alliance with team 181. The number two seeded alliance would be the team 61 and call upon team 2170 as their second and team 173 as their third. These quarterfinals would be a string of upsets though, with eight beating out one, five beating out four, and seven beating out three, seven beating out two, all to move on to the semis. In the semis, there was no easy wins to had. After a replay due to a missed call in semis one, the finalists geared up for what was sure to be the most exciting matches of the weekend. Alliance 3, consisting of teams 63, 28, 11, 53, and 35, 55, up against Alliance 5 of team 166, 17, 40, and 22, 62, were set to duke it out. Three short robots versus three tall robots. The first match was captured by Alliance 5, securing the double climb, with let, which had Alliance 3 struggling to get the double balance. Team 63, 28 struggled to get up. Finals 2 was even more exciting with Alliance 5 capturing the double climb and a balance as well as Alliance 3. Unfortunately for Alliance 3, the second climb was just barely being touched by their parked robot, thus negating the climb and the balance points, securing the victory for the fifth seed Alliance Team 166 Chop Shop, Team 1740, the Cyborg Colonials, and Team 2262, the Robo Panthers. For real though, this is one of the most fun events I've ever been a part of and even with some issues with the venue and the volunteers and the planning committee. It was incredibly fun. Uh, I know you're probably watching Connor and there's no one else I'd probably rather lose to. Uh, watching 166 continuously make improvements over the course of the event was absolutely amazing. Uh, congrats on your team's first banner in your 26 team year history. There's nobody that really deserves it more than you guys. A uh, huge kit. congrats to Team 1100, the T-Hawks from Northboro, Massachusetts, for taking engin engineering inspirations, and Team 6328, Mechanical Advantage from Little to Mass for winning chairmans. Uh, to all my students that I know, you're probably watching this right now. I couldn't be more proud of you. All right, let's send it over to Ben to uh, recap Hatsboro. Um, before... Yeah. yeah, before I do that, <laughs> like Audrey was saying here, we got to say congrats to the king to the Kling Bling here because that's really difficult to do. And uh, congrats to you guys. It's been uh, awesome watching your whole progress so far this year um, mm -hmm. through the Chief Thread and looking forward to more of it. Yeah, I appreciate it. It was definitely a crazy weekend for us with a lot of ups and downs, but uh, making it all the way to the finals and then getting that chairman's fun. Uh, just it was it was awesome. Yeah, a nice little cherry on top there. Yeah, anyway, exactly. yeah, uh, jumping into the Hatboro Horsham. Um, it's always a very competitive event. Um, there was no team with over 70 OPR there, but there was an average match score of 95.6. So when you stack it up versus the other events of the weekend, with the high end being Great Northern and LA North, 95.6 was pretty good uh, on the district event side. You'd be hard pressed to find one that had a higher average match score. Um, so, like I said, the ceiling wasn't very high, but the robots were very deep in talent. And this also showed with the shield generator RP. It was at 18.75% uh, of all times that it could have been achieved. So, um, Hatboro Horsham is usually, it shows pretty strong uh, from the RP side because the middle robot, the median robot, is usually pretty good. Um, so, the qualification rounds like this, because they're, the top end was really thin uh, and the middle was very wide, were very hotly contested. We had 33, 14, 1807, 365, all holding the top spot at various points in the two days. 
In the end, 365 Mo took the top spot. They're a tall bot, great at shooting close range shots. They selected 5895 Petty School Robotics, one of the best trench bots at the event to play with them and rounded out with 341, who snuck all the way to Robot 24 somehow, Miss Daisy. Um, number two and number three alliances were also very good. Number two was led by 1807 Redbird Robotics, showing they are not a one hit wonder and really good this year as well. Uh, who picked 1640 Sabotage, who's always great. Um, number three had 2607, the Fighting Robo Vikings, who also did very well last year and are again this year, and 3314, the Mechanical Mustangs. So the finals were very hotly contested. Those scores weren't as high as what we've seen in some of the high-profile events here, like, uh, to again, use them, LA North and Great Northern. The top end of FMA has a lot of room to improve, that's for sure, and we're probably not going to see them getting better for, for a couple weeks to match those types of scores, but um, it was very hotly contested finals rounds. Uh, the number one sailed to the finals. Number two and number three had a very hotly contested semifinal match where number three barely squeezed out the match in, barely squeezed out in three matches. Like we've seen at other events this weekend, extra climbs and or upgraded autos really could have swung it either way, and we could have seen it gone um, and gone the other way with two taking it instead. Um, number three's third robot, 709 Femtech Fatale, they had to be switched out for a backup. They were replaced by 5113, the Combustible Lemons, who took over <laughs> with some strong defense and a final climb to help carry number three to the win. So number one and number three faced off in the finals where the strength of the number one alliance's ball scoring ultimately gave them a win. Even against a triple climb threat in the second match, they still outscored it. So congrats to 365, 5895, and 341 for securing the win. 30, 303 on the Engineering Inspiration Award and 1403 on their Chairman's Award. Good job to all the teams. Are you saying a number one seed won a MAR district event? That never happens. Happened last year twice. Mm -hmm. or no, oh, once. Yeah? Once, yes. <laughs> once. Exactly. Happened once last year. It's FMA districts. Sorry. You can't sorry. win a MAR district anymore. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So moving on to our discussion topic. No events in all of first managed to get the shield generator RP this weekend. Uh, on that note, some additional stats. I believe Caleb Sykes posted on Chief let us all know that there uh, there were two times that it could have happened. We could have spun the wheel a final time that would have been equivalent to getting the RP once at Palmetto and once, uh, I think it was a Great Northern in one of the qual matches. Um, but uh, basically, it's it's really hard. It's it's probably the hardest RP we've ever had to get at this at this. Point. So. What do we think the teams will uh, pursue in this next few weeks? Is it even worth it for teams to add a color meal, wheel mechanism? What do we want to? What should teams do here? Well, as you were saying, there were a couple events where there were enough balls scored required to get that shield generator RP, and fewer where you know they could have spun the wheel, for example. So I think that when you get to later on in the season, um, that's that's going to be a more important task to have is if you're a team that's already scoring 20 plus balls in Telia, right? If you're a team that is struggling to shoot right now, don't touch the color wheel. But right now, especially, especially position control is something that teams have devoted very little time to, especially the teams that are already shooting ball as well. Yeah. I, I just don't think we'll see it this week. So I just think, so like we didn't see it at all. In anywhere this week and just being at an event and kind of talking through strategies and actually competing um it's just really hard to think that there's time during the match if you're still struggling to go through and get those consistent cycles because we're still all learning how exactly to play the game right so it might be i could see it maybe week three as you start getting some of your like third alliance partners and the, t the people that aren't specializing and shooting the balls or maybe just like like literally a a team that could spin the color wheel play pretty good defense and then hang at the end is you're essentially like a great partner in 
most matches and I would have been so extremely happy to have that in Northern Connecticut. <laughs> so I think maybe now that people are starting to realize that it does have a role um, as people get better shooting the balls, you'll see it more. But right now, still, as everybody's still trying to figure out how to shoot them, I don't think we'll, we'll see it this week. Yeah. I think it's really interesting that this seems more like a season long um, requirement that teams have to do rather than just like building up at an event. And I think that's a really interesting mechanic uh, for this game. Uh, we have a question in chat. We have Gray Phantom Delta 5813. Do any of you think the requirement will be lowered by first in the team update tomorrow, the power cell requirement? No. I don't think they will. Absolutely no. not. <laughs> um, I think it's just going to be something that we see evolve through the season. And um, maybe we'll see it a lot at champs. I think we're going to be seeing it pretty frequently at champs, although not every match. It's not going to be something that's required at champs. Mm. I think it might be at some district champs, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, I could see New England champs, for example, like, getting to a point where uh, it's like 30% of the time or something. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's a little I high. I can see even, that. But... Maybe. We'll yeah. see. We'll see. I'm kind of of the opinion that this is going to be like a four rotor thing that starts showing, but obviously it's something that you don't have to worry about as much when you're in uh, in a limbs matches, but in qual matches, I think it's going to end up being more like a four rotor thing where we start seeing them uh, show up a lot more in like week four, week five, as three three robots can all score and then everyone just goes all offense in qual mm -hmm. rounds just to make sure that you get enough balls in in order to get the RP. Yeah, I think all offense is going to be the move for getting that done. Yeah. All so right. Go we ahead. have the top 10 teams from the Northeast, as voted on by you, voters from the Northeast in the top 25 voting. So, number one was 5687, two, 501, three, team 1519, four is team 4905. Fifth was team 133, sixth was 319, seventh was 4909, eighth was 95, ninth was 694, and tenth was 340. So which teams do you think from here could make the top 25 or aren't as high as you think they would have been? Uh, I think three, 319, they're definitely going to stay where they are because they have, like you watch them, they're incredibly consistent along with 133. Um, and they just have a track record of getting better and better year consistently over the course of the year. Yeah, I've just got to say 694 and 340, they played out of our region this week. So maybe not many, not as many Nor'easter voters would uh, notice them, but they absolutely killed it. They're both undefeated currently. Went absolutely undefeated through the event. They um, 340 built a really solid alliance at Miami Ballad. Um, um, 694 went undefeated all the way through Palmetto. And, bruh, they deserve to be higher. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with you that 694 is probably way too low in this particular case. I mean, going undefeated outside outside their region and in a tough competition, I, I think that they... Um, they deserve to be higher on that one here. FMA teams, uh, if you want to show up on the list, you've got to <laughs> vote. Because right now there's a grand total of zero FMA teams on this list, which probably means there will probably be zero FMA teams in the top 25. So everyone, you really got to vote on this. Otherwise, you're not going to show up. Um, and I think uh, in particular, 5895 and 1807 were really stellar this weekend. Um, and, uh, unfortunately you won't be on the list, so you got to vote. Yeah, I'll echo that. Eight of the teams on this list are from Granite State. So, I mean, Granite <laughs> State was super competitive, but Northern Connecticut was really good. FMA had some great teams. Um, Stipals, Gurr, a couple other New York teams were in Ohio. I mean, got to vote. <laughs> got to vote. If you don't vote, you won't show up. On that note, uh, we're actually going to start our giveaway. So, Tyler, can you hit us up with that keyword? Yeah. Uh, what did we decide on the keyword? I totally forgot now. Uh, did we decide on one? I don't know. So, <laughs> we, had, know. We, had, we, we had a cool one. Oh, it was well, this, uh, it was IMU. Um, I, I, it was in a weird pun acronym, but we're just going to do IMU I am letters. for you. It's I, the I wait, am for you. Okay, hold on. I am for <laughs> you. Perfect. Let's do that. <laughs> so I am for you. That's the keyword. If you're interested in uh, getting in on that, go ahead and uh, 
type that in. You need to follow the channel to be uh, entered to win, and subscribers get five times luck to win. So thanks, everybody, helping support fun. See you all live independent. By the way, Max5254, you're welcome. Go check out the non-existent content that they produce. Oh, my God. Oh. Uh, also, Max, <laughs> I forgot to talk about it in my recap, but Max now has seven silver medals, and I think he's current. No, eight. Eight. This, this was his eighth. Never had a banner, just eight of them. He's that the drive be coach. be more for, than anyone in all of FRC. He's the drive coach for sixty three twenty eight. We were we were laughing about it last night. Right. All right. Let's move right along to next week's previews. Audrey, you want to take it away? Sure. We're gonna start off in New England with the Waterbury District, and we're gonna see another set of robots take the field for the first time. We've got one seventy six Aces High, one seventy seven Bobcats, two thirty Gale Hawks, and five five eight Elm City Robo Squad who we really haven't heard from yet, but I'm sure they will be perennial contenders. They're coming out strong. Um, the only team that's kind of revealed so far is Team 3566. They were the seventh seed captain this past weekend at the Granite State District. But don't let the low seed deter you. This team was fishing for a win. In a series of three-quarter matches, they beat out the two seed of New England powerhouses 1519 and 5687. They hit six in auto. They have so many cycles from the, from the trench when they don't jam, and it's bound to be a fun event this weekend, so make sure you go check it out. All right, moving down to SC Mass. Year after year, SC Mass is one of the most watched events in New England, and this year is sure to be no different. With powerhouse teams, so just 78 and 21, 68, this is going to be a great event to watch. After watching 78 this past weekend in Northern Connecticut, they are without a doubt going to be spending this next week sorting out their robot. Uh, they had a few small issues, and they're absolutely, I believe that they have the capability to make it absolutely unstoppable with their far shot all the way across the field. Along with them, Team 2168, the Aluminum Falcons from Grind, Connecticut, is sure to put on a show. Having won their last 11 district events in a row, no, excuse me, last nine district events in a row, they're looking to continue this streak this season. And this past weekend, 6328 headed down the practice field with them, and oh, oh my God. It, like, I, I love practicing with them, but it's like, it's just, it's so crazy how good that their robot is. It's beyond anything I've seen um, them put out. So my team to watch this uh, this event has got to be 1768 from Bolton, Massachusetts. Uh, coming off last year, they had two event finalists. So be sure to uh, check them out at SE Mass. All right, Ben, you want to take it away with Mount Olive? All right, we're running out of time, so I'm just going to give some of the highlights of the teams coming to this event. We got 11, 193, 222, 223, 1257, 1391, 1676, 303 is coming back after their second uh for their second comp in two weeks and probably the biggest story is we've got 125 the neutrons making their debut at mount olive so it's really going to be a fun event uh, people always report that mount olive is one of the funnest events to go to so it's uh it's going to be a blast make sure you tune in all right that concludes our recap. So, Tyler, can you tell us who won the giveaway yep, for the I am for you? <laughs> I am for you. Yep. Uh, for the ADIS, I am for you. Uh, so the winner of that is going to be uh, somebody who uh, entered and isn't supposed to, Kevin. So, <laughs> so we're going to re-roll that. And uh, Wab Chick, Wab underscore Chick is the winner uh, of the giveaway. So congratulations for that. Make sure you uh, shoot us a message on Twitch or on uh, Discord and lots of rigged emotes in chat, everybody. Hit Thanks us with a lot. the rigged emotes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> in closing, here is your weekly reminder that top 25 voting will open on Sunday. And FMA, I'm looking at you guys for your votes this week. You guys need more rep for your region. Uh, you can also start submitting Twitch and short clips that are not matches to the fun Discord to make it on Clips of the Week, and those will be due Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern, so you should have already submitted clips for this week. Looking at for next week. Uh, so that'll be all we have for you tonight from the Northeast. Thanks for hanging out with us. Fun is once again asking for your help to stay loud, live, and independent. So please consider giving us a little bit of your support as a treat. You can join Fun Nation with a subscription or bits on Twitch, becoming a Patreon at patreon.com backslash first updates now, backslash. or really just letting people know that uh, this is the place to go to, be, uh, to get that fun information that you and your team need. Check us out on Discord, Facebook, Insta, Twitter, and even here live on Twitch and on our videos on YouTube. On behalf of myself, Ben, Kevin, Dave, and our producer, Tyler, I'd like to thank you for tuning in, and thank you to all of our mods in chat. Our next show is going to be the Sweet Tea Recap, and we'll talk to you next week on the Nor'easter Region Recap. Yay, bye, wave, yay. Uh, ride the bus.
Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier two plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.